is University Pulse, and as you may know, it is Tree Fort Week. Right now I'm here with King and Queen of the Losers. You guys want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Scooter. And I'm Kiwi. And welcome to the radio. Detox days at the Little Red House, and I think I might be freaking now. Well, sometimes I just want to run away. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, so you guys are playing Tree Fort tomorrow. You guys excited? That's right. We're playing at the B Amp tomorrow. It's where the old uh, Urban Outfitters used to be. We're playing at 9 o'clock, and we're super excited. We're playing with a bunch of cool bands. Uh, the headliners are Together Pangea, and they're one of the sickest bands around. So it should be a great time. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Cool. Uh, is this your guys' first Tree Fort? This yes. is my first tree fort, and I've been trying to get in for years, and they decline me every year, and I finally made it in. I, I don't know how I convinced them, but it happened. Nice. What's funny is you told me that you didn't take the application super seriously, so I was really mad, and I was like, oh, you're totally going to screw us over. But I guess they thought it was funny and let us in. I pretty much called the promoter cute. Uh, I was flirting with the promoter, and uh, we got in, so. <laughs> That's all you have to do. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> um, so you guys have not never even attended Tree Fort before? This is your first time actually? We've attending? gone to, like, uh, individual shows. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But we've never actually gotten, like, the, the real pass because we're too poor. Yeah. Um, oh. But we've seen, we've seen some shows at Tree Fort before. We love the environment. We usually hang around and just, like, loiter during oh. Tree Fort. Nice. Yeah, I feel like the whole downtown area kind of just gets, like, excited and it's vibing and it's fun to just, like, be around it, even if you don't have, like, an actual tree fort pass. Mm -hmm. Uh, Is there anybody you guys are excited to see this tree fort? I'm very excited to see Andrew W.K. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Just because he's insane. He's... I've heard he puts on a really cool live show. Our friend uh, Jimmy always plays Andrew W.K. when we're in his car. Mm-hmm. And uh, it gets us pretty amped, so we're yeah. excited to see Andrew W.K. Oh, nice. Um, so he puts on a good show. Like, how, what should one expect from your guys' show? High energy? or Yeah, it's like yeah. high energy punk indie pop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that description. I, su- I support that. I support that description of us. Okay, so we should expect some mosh pits and just also chill vibes and also... Everything else? <laughs> so you get it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, we have a couple songs that people tend to mosh to, and then... We have a mosh pit plan. We have a mosh pit plan? We're going to crush our keyboard player, remember? Hmm. We're going to split the crowd up into two halves, okay. and then we're going to have our keyboard player standing in the middle and have both sides run at him. This is he's, just an emergency situation, small. or is this just like your already plan? This is our plan. Oh, okay. And it's his idea, so it's like... <laughs> Well, you hear it here. You got to go now. And he's a small dude. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not very big. Yeah, he's only 18, too, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, and I noticed that I was listening to some of your songs. I noticed you have some comedic elements into songs like Eggplant Emoji. Yeah, I tend to be the one to write more comedic lyrics, I think. It's true. Um. And I don't know if it comes from a place where I haven't been, like, writing songs for as long as you have, Scooter. But I like to have fun with it. And especially with Eggplant Emoji, I had a really fun time just coming up with, like, funny stuff to ask Siri. And <laughs> Hey, Siri, what does Prozac do? Hey, Siri, what's wrong with me? Hey, Siri, what's wrong with me? She is a lot more silly when it comes to, like, the songwriting, but, like, in real life, she is way more serious than I am. <laughs> so I don't know where that comes from. I feel like neither of us is that serious, You're though. You're pretty serious all the time, especially <laughs> in the morning. She is so serious and mean. <laughs> mean. Yeah, she's very mean in the morning time. Yeah, it's, um, I don't like waking up. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> um, so I'm not super informed. Are you guys, like, Married? We are oh, married. Yeah. Married, yes. okay. So what's we that? Don't, 
we don't like promote that very much. But okay. Yeah. It's kind of a secret. We don't want like our fans to like not be able to have crushes on us. Yeah. Oh, okay. You want to still be accessible, right? All right. But what's it like being in a band with your significant other? It's really hard, but also really <laughs> easy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I feel like it makes certain things easy, like. Um, you don't have to like coordinate times to hang out to like collaborate and work on writing songs or practicing because we're already hanging out. Um, but also sometimes like when it's someone you're so close to, if you have like a creative difference, it can be dif- difficult to express that. Okay, I mean I can cut that out of the podcast too. <laughs> no. I know you guys want to have crushes on you, so no. <laughs> <laughs> our diehard fans know that. Yeah, the diehards know what's up. Oh, okay. They know there's no chance. Yeah. <laughs> and they're mostly children, so maybe... <laughs> oh, most of your fans are children? Is this real? <laughs> yeah. Usually, like, it's like 14 to 17-year-olds that like our YouTube channel. That's yeah. mm-hmm. our main demographic. People our age think we're lame. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's because, like, teenagers are more inclined to become fanatic over things, but... Yeah, we have some really, really cool, supportive, like, 14 to 17-year-old Good thing you're playing at the All Ages Movement Project, right? Yes. Absolutely. Our bar shows do not go as well. (laughs) They don't. You can't put the keyboardist in the middle and there's not enough people. There's only, like, four. (laughs) And the keyboardist isn't allowed in. Yeah, he's not even allowed in. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I'll be honest with you guys. Yesterday I went into what you call a YouTube black hole and just watched your guys' YouTube channel for, like, a good while. (laughs) Oh, no. uh, So you guys want to speak to your YouTube channel a bit, like the creative process behind all those videos? I was actually laughing pretty hysterically at a lot of them. So <laughs> I am glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our YouTube channel is, I think, the, our best way of promoting our band. Because mm-hmm. there's like no real way to promote your music. I At least I don't know any. If anyone's got any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Well, it's like everyone's trying to promote their band. And nobody wants to hear it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like nobody really wants to listen to your band and but I think that both of us have a lot of fun like um just kind of expressing our weird like absurdist sense of humor through videos and we're both like media production majors at Boise State and it's just kind of an outlet for us and it's a way for us to express ourselves and it's also a way to kind of build like um a content base where we're not just a band. We also have other creative endeavors. Well, like my favorite artists, like are some like Tyler the Creator and Blink One Eighty Two, and like Mac DeMarco. Like they all have like such a presence on YouTube. Yeah. Where they like also do like even like in the more modern era, like uh, Filthy Frank, Joji, and like he's like a musician, but he also does like comedy YouTube. Mm-hmm. I think like there's a there's a real market for doing like music and comedy sketches. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. And it's really refreshing to see because you kind of see, like, the artist as, like, a human being. Like, they're just as silly as us, you know? Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it, too, is just showing that we're just, like, dumb young people just, like, messing around on the Internet and trying to create something and mm-hmm. have fun. Yeah. And you guys are students. Mm-hmm. That's right. We're both uh, sophomores, right? I think so. We've both dropped out a couple of times in real life. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so we're, we're super sophomores. We're 23-year-old sophomores. Oh, that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> um, so what's the balance like as far as schoolwork and the band goes? Do you have to focus more on school, or can you uh, devote some time to the band? Oh, it's pretty much all schoolwork. Lately, it feels like, especially because I kind of, it's it's like the middle of the semester. and um, And we both have... 25 hour a week jobs that we try and juggle yeah. with it. Mm-hmm. So we all, yeah, so we go to school full time. We both work 25 hours a week and then also try to like make time to like write a video, film a video, edit a video, and write new songs. And so I feel like I have never even one second to breathe, but it's okay. So it's the hustle. So we, yeah. I guess we don't know how to balance it. <laughs> yeah. We have no idea. The answer okay. is my life it was just really unbalanced. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know what to do. Somebody help me. <laughs> are you guys originally from Boise or are you from other areas? I moved here when I was like three. Oh, okay. So pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, and I moved here in middle school. I grew up in Connecticut, but mm-hmm. I've been here for all like my important formative years, really. Mm-hmm. 
So after college, are you guys looking to stay in Boise with the band, or are you looking to kind of expand? I would love to always stay in Boise. Mm -hmm. I would love to, like, go move different places for, like, a short period of time, but I kind of feel like Boise is a great place to Mm -hmm. be in a band. Boise has low taxes. Yeah. So you don't have to, like, make that much money to be, like, successful. Whereas, like, if I if we lived in L.A., yeah. we would have to sell so many albums mm-hmm. to be able to just live. Where here, that number goes down a lot more. Yeah, and I feel like in a, in the world where a lot of our promotion and our presence is via the Internet, our location isn't crazy important. It's not like we need to, you know, be able to, like, go to any auditions like an actor would or, like, where we have to be in a city where things are happening because the Internet is very pervasive and it's everywhere. So you can kind of be anywhere. Mm -hmm. And Boise actually has a very thriving music scene. I was actually interested. What are your guys' thoughts on the overall music scene of Boise? We are stoked on the music scene. We, me and Kaylee both do, uh, used to volunteer at the the Hive before we got too busy, which is like uh, kind of like an incubator for young bands. Mm-hmm. Um, it's run by John Hale of Groggy Bikini fame um, yes. from back in the 80s. Uh, but we used to volunteer there and kind of like give young bands advice like and get them set up and ready for playing like real shows. And a lot of those bands have like gotten to the point where they're playing Tree Fort now or they have like big things coming up where they're putting out good albums and I remember when they used to like suck. <laughs> so yeah. we're, like we're we're very active in the music scene and it's fun to see it grow cuz it's like turned into something way better than it was like 5 years ago the music scene was pretty dead and like Tree Fort has so much to do with that like the Hive has so much to do with that and things are getting like really good lately. Yeah, and there's there's things like like the shredder becoming all ages is really big um, because I feel like there's sometimes this divide where there's a lot of like young people that are not old enough to go to bars but still want to see live music and so I think it's really important to have like all ages venues which you know is one thing that Boise traditionally was lacking and it's kind of coming back more with like the Boise All Ages music project and um, the Shutter Being All Ages and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I think it's definitely like just going up and up. Yeah. And I noticed this year at Tree Fort they're having a lot more All Ages shows too because last year if you weren't 21 it wasn't like as much that you can do. Yeah, you yeah. can go to like all the shows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of like the discount for non 21 passes was like big. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. for real. Um, what's the story behind the name of the band? The King of Queen of the Losers. I find that very interesting name. This is a good story. Okay. Kiwi, this, this Tell is the you. story. I don't know about good story, but um, basically we used to have like a really big um, drug problem and we've been... Super big. <laughs> like a medium drug problem. Actually, we were watching Intervention last night and I redact <laughs> that. We didn't have that bad of it's a like drug a problem. It's like a medium drug problem. Okay. But it, it was a struggle for a while and um, we've been sober for a while now, but... Um, Scooter's mom would always get really mad at us because we had all these, like, kind of people that would hang around us, like, um, just to do drugs with us. And we weren't really, like, going anywhere or, or doing anything or progressing at all in our lives. Um, we we're just kind of stagnating. And one day she sat us down and she was like, what is your guys' plan? Are you just going to be king and queen of the losers for the rest of your lives? And we looked at each other and we're like, that's a sick band name. And we decided that would be our band name. So we took a diss and we turned it into our band name. (laughs) I love that. That's really cool. Uh, Another question. I noticed that you guys have raccoons a lot on, like, your pictures and stuff. What's the story behind the raccoon? The raccoon was pretty just random and arbitrary. (laughs) Well, it's not that random. This is every single time Michael's like, it was random. But I remember... And it was random. No, it's because our drummer's last name is Coon, and so his favorite animal is a raccoon. And he has raccoons all over his house, like paintings of raccoons, drawings of raccoons, wood carvings of raccoons. And it was his, like, I think way of getting, like, an imprint on the band. And it was his idea because it's his favorite animal. It was my idea that we needed a mascot, okay? So give me some credit. <laughs> and you picked a raccoon. Well, you guys picked a raccoon yeah. together. <laughs> I like that. 
Um, so is there anything next for uh, King and Queen of the Losers? Are you guys w- working on a new uh, production or anything like that currently? Well, we're planning on going on tour this summer. Oh. So um, we want to go on like a full U.S. tour. We've gone on like little mini tours like Utah and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, we want to do a full U.S. tour. So that's kind of what we're cooking up right now. And then we want to have a new album to promote. Um when we go on tour, right? No. No? We decided that we're going to do the album after the tour. Album after the tour, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so who would you would you tour with, another band, or would you just tour? I think we're going to try and do it ourselves, even okay. though that's like a bad idea, <laughs> usually. <laughs> but um, we can make more money that way. And we're lucky if, in like most places, we can draw five people to a show. Okay. Like... Um, especially in, like, smaller towns. And so we rely on local support from bands. So if we draw five people and then a local band draws 20 of their friends, hey, that's 25 people, that's a decent show. Um, So we kind of just rely on bands in each market to kind of bring a new audience to us, Mm -hmm. which is kind of what we do for touring bands around here is we are the local support Mm -hmm. and then... They come into town and then we bring our friends is kind of like this kind of like a courtesy thing that happens within like at least our local music scene. Yeah, I think with just like with smaller bands in general. Yeah. So. Lots of house shows, lots of um, small venues. Yeah, and it's like over the, you know, the past while that we've been playing, we've been making friends with like all the bands that have come to tour here. And so we've kind of, like, put out little tendrils over the U.S. and have, like, people who could help us set up shows. So I think it's feasible to do a show ourselves without trying to, like, hop on a bigger band's bill. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. So you're hoping to go, like, across the whole U.S. or just, like, stay in the West? I think we're going to try and go East Coast. Oh, wow. Maybe that's wishful thinking, but I think we're going to try and go for it. Yeah. Oh. We want to hit uh, Ohio and... Virginia because we we have a, a couple fans that are diehard in those areas oh, really? that mm-hmm. are big fans of what we do, um, so we want to we want to get to them um, if we if we can. Um, that's the main goal. Is we may have a small fan base, but that allows us to like kind of make friendships with like people. Mm-hmm. Like because if someone tweets at me, I don't get that many Twitter messages. So. I'll respond to them, and then I become friends with most of these people. So I connect with people on Twitter, and then I learn where they're from, and then I make a mental note, hey, maybe let's try and go there on tour. Yeah. Kind of rogue promotion, kind of like doing this interview. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, you guys should keep at it. I have a feeling about you guys. I think you're going to do good. (laughs) Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, Well, is there anything else you want to add or let anybody know about your show or about you guys in general? I just want to say thank you. You did a really good job with this interview. Thank you for having us um, yeah. and coming on here to, to promote. This was a really good time. Yeah, and everybody should go to Tree Fort, even if you don't see us. Just No, don't even Boise bother music. going if you're not going to see <laughs> us. You should see King and Queen of the Losers, the Boise All Ages Movement Project, tomorrow at 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. It'll be a killer show. They'll bring down the house. They'll have a crazy, crazy mosh pit with their keyboardist. It'll just be a great time. Yeah. <laughs> and check out their YouTube channel. It's really funny. That's right. All right. Thank you, guys. This is University Pulse.